Hey everyone, this video I am going to talk about external configurations, how we can manage the external configuration and before understanding how we can manage that, we should understand what is this external configuration all about. So, prerequisite of this video is uh, that you should have idea how you can create a microservice. Only then you will be able to understand what is this configuration all about. So, uh, let me show you how you can create it. And uh, I have already have created few videos about uh, how to create these microservices and what is this configuration all about. I'll give the link in description box as well. So, let me go ahead and get started with this one. First, understand the problem statement. So, I was talking about the configurations in microservices. So, what configurations can be in a microservice? So, for example, that I have created a microservice which is a product service. What can be in product service? Product service needs some database connection as well, right? Uh, to store the data. It also wants to interact with any third party to check the any fraud check details or if it wants to perform any transaction, it wants to contact to third party, any other microservice. So, by that I mean the external credential. Database credentials, I just talked about, it needs some database connection. So, database, to query with the database, it cannot be free. Uh, uh, from free, I mean it cannot be open. You have to enter some username, password to to connect to the database and be able to get the data from there. There can be some constant values which we do not want to configure, which we do not want to hard code in the code itself, but I want to configure it so that I can, what is the benefit of uh, making these things configurable? When we are making these things configurable, we can change those values as uh, whenever I want without, uh, without changing, without doing any changes in the code itself. So, when I can do it, when I can do the changes without changing the code, there are lots of benefit that when, when I have to do the code changes, then I have to go through the entire release cycle, right? So you have to do the code changes just to change a particular value. That code will be reviewed. It will be in feature branch testing. It will be in release branch and all those cycles will be done. But when I have made that configurable, I just can change that configuration by starting that uh, instance, by starting that service, that's it, right? So, as I told you, uh, the prerequisite of this that you should have understanding how to create a microservice. So, let me show you the video that I already have created about and I'll give the link in description box. You can check out that. Uh, so, this is the playlist microservices with the Spring Boot. So, Right now I am covering the microservices architecture, but I already have covered lots of video about microservices with Spring Boot. So lots of demos are, are already available on the channel. You can go ahead and check out that. So this is the big playlist, which first video is explaining about architecture. I just want to explain here the configuration part. So this is the third video. Microservices with Spring Boot rest, restful application using Spring Boot. This is 35 minute video. If uh, go ahead and check out this video, you will get the understanding about how to create the RESTful API from scratch. And the, then coming to the configuration part, there are many ways that you can configure, uh, you can do the configuration that uh, might, uh, you might have heard about the properties file where you maintain the configuration. So, if I come down here, video number 8.1 and 8.2, properties in Spring Boot and YAML. So, properties file was the uh, traditional way to maintain the configuration, but nowadays we have YAML. YAML also, which is more readable. I have explained everything about this one, how you can manage the configuration in these two videos, right? So, you, uh, I'll give the link in description box. I, I highly suggest you to go through this. So, uh, just I was talking about these configurations. So, what is the need to change this? Like, what is the, what are the actual scenarios? So, First, when we are developing a product service, it is in the dev environment. So, in the dev environment, I will be having a different database, different data set to test the services locally, right? So, I will be needing the uh, some uh, some data database URL, database uh, username and password, which will be uh, which will be spe specific to dev environment. When development is complete, it will be going to into the test phase. In the test phase, I have to change those DB credentials because that is going to change. So, with the help of this properties in YAML file configuration, I can do that without changing, without doing any change in the code, right? And then after testing, it is going to, it is going to be in the production. In the production, everything is going to be different, these configuration like DB credential, external URL and constant values. So, 
how to how to decide which values are configurable and which are not so you should see that how many are values that are changing based on the environment like i was moving from the dev test prod so i saw that db credential and if there is any external url any external microservice to call that is going to change and constant values it might it, it might be different for the dev value test value or production value right so this is how you can uh, see that uh, how many values are configurable in your microservice so this is about the problem statement and this is the one way that you can maintain your values in your properties and yaml file apart from managing these values in the properties file in yaml value in the distributed system microservices architecture we can have a dedicated uh, repository for the configuration only which can be maintained on the github bitbucket anywhere which product service can contact here and we can have a profile specific environment specific properties file here so wherever your product service is deployed whether it is in dev environment test environment prod environment accordingly it will pick the properties from the github here central repository here so anyone can see anyone can do the changes uh, as per the requirement of your uh, use case right so this is how we can use the centralized configuration management in microservices all right so it's very useful right and how to do the centralized configuration and these things external configuration management i already have covered that so there is one concept here under spring spring cloud config server there are a few videos that i have covered in detail what is this all about and how to do that coding from scratch you should check out this playlist let me show you the videos over there so this is the playlist that i was just talking about the spring cloud config server there are four or five videos first one is just theory about the spring cloud config server and all other are the demo about these things so i have explained it in great detail i highly um, i suggest you to go through this if you want to understand the how how does it work and what are the actual and real time use cases right so that's all about the spring uh, how to how we can manage the external configuration management so next i am going to cover about the summary about all the cross cutting concerns that we have covered so far want to see all other topic under microservices architecture this is the link that you should check out that's all about this video i am going to repeat the last line of the video which is most obvious uh, if you found the content useful please don't forget to like share subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that we get notification about every upload on the channel i'll see you in the next video till then take care stay safe bye bye